Hello, uh, we're going to introduce our last Chapter 8 tutorial, which is on creating frequency distributions. We're going to use this to plot daily stock returns for Ford Motor Company, and you'll do it for a company of your choice. But you can also do this for lots of other things. It's a great skill to know. Um, I use it when I calculate grades, and you'll probably find something to use it for. All right, so I'm going to work in this sheet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my data from the sheet that we created in our last tutorial. So I'm going to go back down here to my plotting daily returns for the last 10 years. And I've got all of my data here, my date and my daily return. So this is 10 years of daily returns. This is a lot of days. So I want this data. And I'm going to highlight the date and the daily returns, those two cells. And I'm going to hit Command A, which is Select All. On your computer, that may be different. So you'll want to try to find that. You can use the help function. And then once it's all highlighted, I'm going to hit Copy, Command-C. I'm going to bring it over here to my frequency distribution sheet. And I'm going to paint it here with a Command-V. I'm going to format that. Pardon me for just a second. Okay. So before I get started, I want to take down note of a couple numbers. The first is that the first row I have data in is row 5. So I've got data in A5 and B5 and then I'm going to go down and figure out where the bottom of my data is. I'm going to do that by scrolling down and seeing here that my data ends in row 2520 and I just make a note of that. So my data is in row 5 to, two, uh, to 2,520. And then I come back up to the top. All right. So this is our date every day uh, between March 14th, 2003 and today. And then in a previous tutorial, we calculated these daily returns, the stock return per day. So I want to get a couple of bits of information. I want to know how many days this is. I want to know what the minimum return was over this course of 10 years. I want to know what the maximum return was that Ford returned on a given day in 10 years. And I want to know which dates those maximum and minimum returns came on. Then we're going to create a frequency distribution that shows us essentially um, something that looks a little bit like a normal distribution, but has a lot more events way out in the tails than we would see in a normal distribution. So let's start by calculating or figuring out how many days we're looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the count function. C-O-U-N-T, parentheses, and then I need to enter my array of values. Well, I could start like this and scroll all the way down, right? But it's going to take a long time with those 2,000 values. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, because I know what cells they're in because I've looked, we, that's what we did first. I'm going to say they're in B5 to B2520. So there are 2,516 days. So my minimum return is going to be equal to min, that's the form, that's a um, function, and my cells again are B5 to B2520. So my minimum return was 25% in a given day. That's incredible. My maximum return, MAX, same range of cells, B5 to B2520. My maximum return on a given day was 29.63%. And now I want it to tell me what day these occurred. And this uses an index function, which is a more complicated function, um, and it makes a little bit less intuitive sense. But we learn it, and then we're fine. So index, we have two options, and what we're going to do is start with the array. So index, we want to know on which date something happened. Okay, so we're going to start with the dates. Our date array is in A5 to A2520. And then what are we looking for? So on what day did the return that happened in this cell occur. So we want to match them. We want to match from this row a value in this row. So I'm going to say I want it to match. My 
my minimum return, and then I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look for that array in B5 to B2520. There's going to be this match type, and for now it's enough to know that you just need to enter zero. I'm going to close it with two parentheses, and there's our date. Our lowest return happened on November 19th, 2008. Well, what about our maximum return? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do an index function, and we're going to try to find from the dates located in A5 to A2520 when something happened. So we're going to match, M-A-T-C-H, not math. We're going to match our maximum return, and we can find that in B5 to B2520. Match type for now is zero. That's all we need to know. We hit return. So our maximum return happened on November 26, 2008. So now we're going to calculate our frequency distribution. We have our minimum return and our maximum return. So we need to create a set of bins. A bin in Excel is like a bin that you would throw your shoes in, except instead of throwing shoes in, we're going to throw returns in. So we're going to put our returns into different bins. So equal to or less than 25%, between 25% and 27%. So I'm going to start with my first bin is going to be equal to my lowest return. And then here when we get to how many, it is going to tell us how many returns were less or equal to 25%. And I need to get from 25% to 29.63%. And I'm going to do that by saying, by increasing each of them by 2%. Uh, That's because I've got such a huge array here, um, over 100. Um, if you only have an array of 20, you can choose a different number. Um, you don't have to jump up by 2%. You could jump up by half a percent or a quarter percent or one and a half percent. You just want to fit it on a reasonable number of lines, right? You don't want this enormous distribution. Um, you don't need a million data points. It's fine. So I'm going to take that return of negative 25% and I'm going to add 2%. So my next one is going to give me this bin. I'm going to find out how many are between 25 and 23%. I'm just going to grab this and drag it down looking for, I need to get all the way up to 29.63%, so that's going to be to 31%. All right. I don't need all those decimal places. So we are going to say that it's a percentage with no decimals. Perfect. And now here's the frequency distribution. This is when I would advise you to find your Excel help function because I rarely have come across two computers or two versions of Excel that do frequency exactly the same way. So when I get to my Excel help function, I enter my function and then I just click on this frequency button here and it brings up help, help with this function. And then I have a set of instructions and I also have a link to online help and tutorials and videos for using frequency function. And so if you're stuck, you have a lot of resources to figure out your particular version of Excel because there's a lot of them out there. Okay, I'm going to close this. So when I'm doing a frequency distribution, I have this huge set of data and I want to find out how many of these data points fit in each of these bins. So how many are less than and equal to 25%? How many are between 25 and 23? Negative 23 and 25. How many between negative 21 and 23? Similarly, how many times in one day did Ford have stock returns between 25 and 27%? So I'm going to take this data and organize it into these bins. So the first thing I need to know is what array. An array is a, a range of data, and our array is from B5 to B2520, the same array we've been working with before. So that's my data. I hit a comma and it wants to know where my bins are. So these are my bins. I close my parentheses and I hit return. I know since my minimum return is 25%, I'm going to have at least one. And it turns out I do have one. So this is where it gets tricky and this is where everybody's Excel version might be slightly different. But on my computer, what I'm going to do is highlight all of the bins and I'm going to hit control U. That automatically highlights 
that formula and that first cell, that frequency formula. And now it knows that I want to fill in all these cells by sorting this data into these bins. Right now it knows that. And to tell it, okay, let's do it, I hit Command Z Return and it fills them in. Your frequency distribution is going to be small at the extreme ends, right? Very few values out here. And then the values are going to get larger in the middle. If it doesn't look like that, if it's all one, or if it gets larger and larger and larger as we go forward, um, something has gone wrong. Try it again. Uh, send me an email. We'll, we can figure it out. Now all I want to do is plot it. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. So I want to see what this looks like in graphic form. So graphically, I'm going to highlight, start by highlighting all of my values. And I'm going to go to my charts. And I'm going to choose a line chart. And I'm just going to choose a plain line. Oh, it's giving me two series, series one and series two. With all these big percentages, this can't be right. So I'm going to select my data. It's got these two series of data. I'm going to remove them both. And I'm going to add a series of data. This is going to be series one. Um, I'm just going to call it frequency. And then my Y values, um, the amount of time something occurred, is going to be in these cells here. And my X values are going to be the percentages. They're going to be my bins. There we go. Now that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to hit enter or OK and then we'll be good to go. I don't need to see that. You can hear my computer thinking. It's a new computer. It shouldn't need to think so much. So what would I like it to look like? It's not looking like I really want it to look. Hmm. That's a little bit better. Let's adjust my axis. I'm going to format my axis so that my I don't need any value less than zero. And I don't need any value greater than a thousand. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to get rid of these lines, these vertical grid lines, by right clicking and hitting delete. And after that, I would say we're pretty much looking OK. This is about what we would expect it to look like. We can play with it a little bit more. If you want to see a wider variety of percentages, we can format our x-axis. And we can say, all right, um, my minimum return doesn't need to be any more than 25% negative. My maximum return doesn't need to be any more than 30% positive. My major unit, that's telling me 0.1 is going to be, it's giving me 10% intervals. But let's have it give us 5% um, intervals. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So we can see that we have an approximately bell-shaped curve, right? It's fairly symmetrical with the most common return being positive, most of our returns being positive. But this doesn't look like any frequency distribution that we've really seen because there are so many out here. These are called long tails, which tells us intuitively that... Um, that stock returns are riskier than would be predicted by a normal distribution. If this were a normal distribution, only a small percentage of the returns would be out here in the tails, but we've got a, quite a large percentage of these returns out here in the tails. So that is how we create a frequency distribution. Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful, and feel free to email me with any questions you may have.